Okay, welcome. Today we're going to be doing an acid base titration. We have some pretty standard equipment here. We'll be using these burettes. Uh, we'll talk about how those are used during the experiment. Um, we have a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, some phenolphthalein indicator, some 0 0.100 molar hydrochloric acid, and then we have a bottle of distilled water. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is to fill our burettes. We'll actually have, ha have had them cleaned. They'll have been rinsed with the solution in which we'll be titrating with. So what you'll need to do is you'll have to top them off and take what's called an initial reading. So um, on the right hand side we are going to be using base. So you'll take your base and you will simply uh, fill this up past the zero mark on the uh, burette. Actually, we'll go just before the zero mark since our tip, the tip of the burette is already filled. And then on the left hand burette, we'll do the same thing, but of course we'll use our 0 .100 molar hydrochloric acid. Remember, keep the acid on the left. If you get those mixed up, we'll end up with some problems. So, now our, our initial reading is taken by reading uh, the bottom of the meniscus on our burette. So let's see how I can get this on video for you. I'm going to put a piece of paper behind this for you so it becomes easier to read and you'll see that uh, that reading, um, it looks like the bottom of the meniscus is between the 0 and the 1. It hasn't quite reached the 1 yet so the initial value would be 0 point something. If I read the bottom of the meniscus I'm going to get 0 0.9 and I can estimate the last digit maybe 0 0.91 for my initial base reading. For my initial acid reading, let me turn the burette so we can read that. It looks like that's going to be between uh, 1 and 2, so I'm going to call it 1.16. So I have my initial acid and my initial base value. Now, we're going to need to put some acid in our Flask and uh, we can rinse this out with distilled water. Doesn't make a difference if it's dry. And we'll put that under the burette for our acid. And we will obtain approximately 25 milliliters. So to open up our stopcock, when it's perp perpendicular, it's obviously in the opposition. And when it's parallel to the burette, we've opened it up. So right now, the acid is entering the flask. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. We want to get approximately 25 mils. I'm going to stop this right around the 26 mark on my burette. I'm not sure if you can see it draining there. So we'll stop it right around 26, give or take a little bit. It's not really that important. So we have approximately 25 milliliters of acid in our flask. Um, sort of hard to see that volume, so we're going to add some distilled water to this. Doesn't make a difference how much. Think about it. If I add distilled water to my acid, have I changed the amount of acid that's in there? No, I still have a certain volume of acid in there. I've just diluted it with a bit of water. Now we need to neutralize this with my sodium hydroxide. So to do that, we're going to add two drops of our phenolphthalein indicator. Phenolphthalein, as you know, is colorless in an acid solution and it becomes bright pink in a basic solution. So you'll see, obviously, we have an acid solution here. We'll put that underneath our base burette, and we will start titrating. Let me get a piece of white paper for you. Put that underneath here so we can see the color change. Let me zoom in on this as we do the titration. Hopefully you can see that. And we'll start adding our base. We've already taken an initial reading of both. And so as we add our base, you can see the pink color is there for a moment. Uh, you know, it's highly concentrated in base. Uh, but you'll see that as the base molecules come in contact with acid molecules, they're neutralized and the pink color quickly dissipates. What we'd like to do is for to have that pink color stay for 30 seconds. Um, and we want to get it to the exact drop. So we'll continue to add. And uh, let's see what happens here. I'm getting fairly close to my endpoint. The endpoint is when the color changes there, and it stays at least for 30 seconds after swirling. So, getting closer. 
you can see this is pretty easy to do and actually sort of fun. So it's staying a bit longer. I'm getting very close to my end point, and there we go. So I've overshot my end point. Please do not discard your solution. If you overshoot your end point, you can just add more acid. Remember, we haven't taken a final acid reading yet, so I'm just going to add a little bit of acid here. Not too much. We'll swirl that, and there we go. The pink color's gone, so now it's acidic. And we'll continue to add at base. This time we'll do it a bit more slowly. Just a couple of drops there. Almost. A few more. Once again, we want to continue doing this until we get that pink color to stay. And once again, the objective is to get it to the perfect drop. Okay, now I've passed it again. No big deal. We'll go back to our acid. And I'm just going to add a couple of drops. I'm very close to my end point here. All right, now we're going to add our base drop by drop. And we'll see what we have here. There we go. There's three drops and a hanging drop. We'll touch the side and catch that. And I'm not quite sure that's to the exact drop, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just one drop of acid. Uh, good hand-eye coordination is helpful here. There's one drop of acid, and you can see it's gone colorless again. So we will add just one drop of base, and then we will take our final reading. I hope if I can get one drop here. If not, we'll have to add more acid again, won't we? So I know I'm very, very close to my end point. Let's see what happens here. There's my drop. And let's see, we'll swirl it if that color stays for 30 seconds. We know that we've reached our end point. <clears throat> so I'm pretty confident that we've done it. So we'll go ahead and we'll take our final base reading and then we'll take our final acid reading. So we'll look at the burette again to make sure we can read this. So it looks like we're between 30 and 31. So it's going to be 30 point something, not 31 point something. So we can estimate one digit. Looks like it's a little bit more than 30.5. I'm going to go 30.55 as my final base reading. And then we'll swing around and we'll do the same thing for my final acid reading. And let's take a look. Let's see what we get for our final acid reading. Let's position this so we can read it. Well, it's best, of course, to get eye level with this, and I'm doing the best I can with my, with my camera here. We're not getting very good focus here. Let me zoom back out just a little bit. See if we can get that. Okay, it looks like it's between 27 and 28. So we're going to call it uh, 27 point, oh, let's see, 8. 27.85 would be my final acid reading. So we've finished our titration. You guys know the molarity of the acid. Once again, the acid was uh, 0 0.100 molar hydrochloric acid. Um, we do not know, of course, the molarity of the base. That's the objective in the first part of this experiment, and that's to find the molarity of that base. So you now have enough information to do that. Think about this. You know the initial um, and the final base reading. So you know the volume of base that was required. And you know the initial and the final acid volume. So you know the volume of acid that was used and its molarity. So with that information, you should be able to calculate the molarity of your sodium hydroxide solution. We call this process standardization. And in your experiment, you'll be required to do, this, uh, to do this three times and take an average. Now, I did this earlier today in my classes, and we were getting 0 .090, well, 7. Right around there, 0 .0907. Go ahead and try that calculation on your own and see if you get the same answer as I did. And once again, uncertainty lies in the last digit. So I would feel really good if I got 0 0.0909 or 
0.0906 or even 0 0.0910 or something like that. We can be off in that very last digit. Alrighty, I hope you enjoy this. It's pretty simple. You guys will have fun doing this and it's a skill that we use quite often in uh, the first year chemistry lab setting. So thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.